Finally, in addition to economics, in addition to the core nature of America, there's a diff gap this big about how we approach the world. My dad was a career soldier in the infantry for 27 years. I think the world is dangerous, and I believe we need to be stronger than our potential enemies. The, pre the president lives in a fantasy world where there are no enemies. They're just misguided people with whom he has not yet had coffee. If you watched him go to see Hugo Chavez, and you watched him smile and be friendly while Chavez deliberately, cynically, and insultingly gave him an anti-American book, and Obama didn't have a clue that he'd been insulted. You know, Ahmadinejad, the dictator of Iran, says that he wants to wipe out Israel and drive America out of the Middle East. Now, as a historian, I have a pretty good sense of what that means. It means he wants to wipe out Israel and drive America out of the Middle East. <laughs> but if I were a left-wing Harvard Law graduate surrounded by really clever left-wing academics, I would know that this is actually a sign that Ahmadinejad probably had a bad childhood, <laughs> that his potty training was probably inadequate, and that he has in, been trying to come to grips with his mother's failure to love him enough. And therefore, he's expressing himself in some manner that if only we could unlock it, we could be closer to him and we could be friends together. This is madness. And people need to take this seriously. Remember when, on 9-11, airplanes hit the World Trade Center and hit the Pentagon? And the next day, somebody in national security said, gee, we hadn't thought about the use of commercial airliners as a weapon. And I thought to myself, Tom Clancy wrote a novel about it eight years earlier, in which a Boeing 747 goes into the Capitol. There is a complete failure of imagination among our elites. They can't get in their head the fact that if, if the Iranians get nuclear weapons, they don't have to fire a missile. They can just drive a boat into Jacksonville, or drive a boat into New York Harbor, or drive a boat into Long Beach. They can come across the border in a van. There are lots of ways to deliver nuclear weapons. We live in a world where if we're not careful, we're going to lose one or more American cities. We were shattered, shaken, by 3,100 dead. A nuclear weapon could easily be a quarter million dead and a half million or more wounded. We have no preparation for something like this. And you have an administration which at every level is kidding itself. They're talking about cutting the defense budget dramatically. They're talking about weakening our intelligence capabilities. They consistently try to appease our enemies. They had a meeting of the Organization of Islamic Countries and the State Department to talk about how they, the government of the United States could censor those of us who would inappropriately say something that might be offensive to somebody who, who was Islamic, a concept which is astonishing. I mean, if I tell you that there are terrorists around the world plotting to kill us and that they have one common characteristic, it isn't belonging to Rotary. And yet, when you listen to this administration, they have literally blocked every federal document from discussing honestly what threatens us. That's how big the gap is.